Okay, it's Andy Graham with HoboTraveler.com. I've traveled nonstop for 16 plus years and went to 101 countries. I'm in Malta. I'm actually in St. Julian Bay. Uh, probably said that correct incorrectly, but uh, kind of a small country, about 400,000 people, and uh, um, you know, uh, best I can tell, a lot of uh, people are retiring here. Okay, let's see. I miss. Okay, Melissa M. here. Um, I have heard you refer to motion sickness. I have, I have always had problems with it myself. My question today is what advice do you have to avoid to deal with it while traveling? Um, okay, I have a lot of different things I do, but mainly it's about controlling the, the position of your thing um, if okay if you're getting into a bus uh, the first set of wheels you have to walk you have to figure out the seat that is just after the front wheels you don't want to be ahead of the front wheels and the last place you want to be is behind the back wheels so you want to be just about six seats back in the bus so if you're buying a ticket you, you want to go about six seats back or five seats back and choose the ticket and then uh, you you can get seasick by rocking buses where if you're standing up and they're going around corners so you I, I always sit down no matter what and I actually got on a bus one time where this uh, I was going to get on a bus in Guatemala and they wanted to put me clear in the back of the bus and I refused to get on I won't get on a bus if they're going to put me like I say a five hour trip and it's in the back I just won't get on it and a lot of that's one reason why I refuse almost to book tickets ahead or anything like that I want to choose the quality of my trip and the only way to do is to first inspect the vehicle before you get into it and then get on it and then go and uh, of course uh, you know shorter trips less than two hours are a lot better to tolerate than eight hour trips um, I seem to do better with motion sickness if I start to get sick if I close my eyes and they say to look ahead it's never worked for me but they say you're supposed to do it in a bus I can't do it um, some people really bad gets uh, motion sickness in the back of a plane so if you got a seat that is all the way clear to the back next to the toilets it'll bounce up and down and you can get it it's not the it's the bouncing up and down that makes you you seasick so the up and down jostling so if you think of the back of the bus the bu back of the bus bounces up and down and that'll get you motion sickness and uh, I've been experimenting with a theory um, that I've been doing it's the idea that uh, you know when you go for surgery uh, they won't let you eat for 24 hours for 12 hours before surgery so you have nothing in your stomach and in a way I believe that if you really have motion sickness bad the 12 hours before your trip don't eat and uh, just abstain from eating and which is sounds painful but the the pain of motion sickness is a lot worse than you know not eating for 12 hours because at surgery they don't want people I, I, I'm not sure exactly why they do that but I believe that uh, motion sickness is about having things in your stomach to basically vomit right so but um, the one reason, you know, if you're really, really sick, like I don't get in uh, small vans. I mean, if you want me to ride in a van, like a 14, 15 person van, I'll do my darndest to avoid this thing. And a lot of the times, the, the more expensive trip, the faster trip, what's considered the luxury trip, is the shuttle van. And this is 10 times worse than a bus. And I, I had, I don't like them. They sit low. The drivers are crazy. They go around corners. A bus cannot drive like a maniac. So I, I stay in buses, and I, uh, a train is, you know, you're going to have trouble getting uh, motion sickness in a train. Um, in a car, I find that sitting in the front seat and not the back seat. So um, I always choose the front seat of the car and not the back seat of the car. 
is to bouncing up and down. So you want to be right behind the front wheels of the car or the, the thing. It's about choosing your place. In, a, in an airplane, you need to be right above, about on the wings, okay? So you want to be right on top of the wing in a, a wing seat. Uh, it's, it's not that hard to do this. It's about... Well, you have to be willing to defend yourself because um, I'm, I'm usually arrive early for the buses so that I can get on first um, and I take the best seat in the bus, right? Uh, the people that arrive late to a bus get the seat they deserve on the bus, right? Uh, the early bird does get the worm, so arrive real early for the bus so that you can get a good seat, choose your seat, but if I find that night buses are some reason when it's cooler out I don't get seasick as much. Uh, when I'm sleeping I don't get seasick, but uh, I mean I call it seasick but it's really motion sickness, right? Um, generally it's all about being willing to say no. A lot of people a traveler eventually comes to the point where he knows that the people will sell him a bill of goods. They will put him on the worst seat in the place. They will give him the worst room in the hotel. And all you got to do is not, not allow it, right? And this is why I really recommend in some countries you don't get reservations and things like that. Because when you get a reservation, they can do anything they want to to you. And when you, you know, but... When, if you really, I, when I was in our, uh, Brazil with this Argentina girl, she actually got seasick snorkeling, okay? And she was going to fly back, and I realized that I had to even take more stringent things, and I got her in the front of the thing. I didn't let her eat her mangles in the morning, and I got her right in the seat, and we didn't get on. I, she, I said, we're not getting on the bus just because that's the only seat left. We're going to go on a different bus. And that's one of the benefits of having uh, unlimited time. I can actually stay, I mean, if it's raining, I can stay in the hotel for another day. But uh, in a lot of ways, the freedom is when you don't have the reservations, you don't have the, the plane tickets, you don't have all these things signed up for you. Those are the things that are going to control your life and, and you're going to have a bad uh, motion sickness. Um, but uh, you you got to stand up for yourself, and I I also think that you have to make it a team effort. If you're with a man or a woman, or you're traveling with friends, you tell them you you get seasick, and just say no, I'm not getting on this unless you, know, you don't go along with the crowd. For a four-hour trip, being sick the whole time is miserable, and. Uh, you just don't have to do it, but it's, uh, it's a self-service world, guys, so don't learn to man up and uh, take, take responsibility for yourself and don't go along with people. And if the people that you're with act like it's no big deal, they don't really, they're not really your friend. I mean, if obviously uh, al allowing your friend to get sick for three or four hours is pretty cruel in a way. So, Andy Graham, but uh, it's all about choosing the seat on the on the on the vehicle unit. But it's I you can almost always avoid these little vans. So, up for the big bus, you you'll arrive late, but you'll arrive healthy, right? And you won't uh, lose uh, 24 hours to a major sickness or vomiting and all that stuff. Because it's like a hangover effect, right? Andy Graham, Hobo Traveler in Malta.